busting all the myths on COVID-19 for us and talking us through what she went through. Um, hi, Mia. Hi. How are you? I'm fine now. I'm completely normal and I've cured. So it's really good. How are you? I am great. Oh my gosh. It is so great to talk to you and um, just hear about your story. Um, first of all, how are you feeling? I'm absolutely fine. Like uh, COVID and Corona was really difficult. But now that I'm home, it's much more relaxed. I'm in my own space. So it's more comfortable and much better now. So, okay, can you start from the beginning for us? So basically, hmm. honestly, I really wanted to talk to you because so many different stories have been passed around. Like what quarantine is like, um, you know, uh, what they do to you, what COVID-19, what the virus is like, how it attacks you, how difficult it is. Like there's been so many like myths and so many, like just so many, I think, rumors and misconceptions and miscommunication that goes on. And uh, I think people need to hear it from someone like you who has actually been through it, who survived it, how you survived it, what was quarantine like, what was it like in the hospital, who were you able to talk to? Like, so, I mean, if you could just take us through from the beginning, um, I'd just like to ask you, like, do you, do you know where you contracted it from or do you have any idea where you might have contracted it from? Uh, so most um, it's very difficult to track where exactly I got it from. But according to my symptoms and all, doctors suggest that it might be from either travel or the airplane or, you know, airport. Places are infected. You might get from an infected thing, maybe like a door handle or something. Wow. A, a stable surface or anything. So that must be it. So was it when you were, you were traveling back from London, right? Yes, and London. I started there. back in, in India. Was that when you felt like you had symptoms of it and you went to get checked? Yes. So I landed on the 14th in Bombay. And when they do a thermal scan after everyone lands, they have a mandatory thermal scan for all passengers. And there was no temperature. There was no cough then. But on the 16th morning when I woke up, I had a temperature about 101. And then I also had a lot of dry cough. So we called the helpline to take some advice because I had come from a very highly infected country. And then they suggested that we should straight away go get me tested and go to a med government medical facility. So that's what we did. And I'm glad that's we did that. That's crazy though, Rita, because like that means there are people who were probably coming into the country who weren't showing symptoms. But even though they had done whatever routine checks they did, um it wasn't detected so they were allowed you know out and about and they were actually carrying the virus like yourself you were actually carrying the virus but you were not showing symptoms at that time it just came up much later yeah so people don't declare that's wrong yeah. so it's crazy because i have actually been hearing that there have been people out there who haven't been showing symptoms but have been positive yeah and people who, uh, when you carry the virus, you yourself don't know that you're carrying. So it's best to declare. Like in Bombay, there are so many uh, hospitals which have been shut down for the same reason. Patients did not uh, tell the doctor and now the entire team of medical people who are in the hospital have been infected. So the hospitals oh, have to be closed. Terrible. So, yeah. so out of your experience, do you suggest every single person who's been traveling or who feels that they have been in a highly maybe infected place or something should just not take any chances and should anyways but okay what is that process like because i mean i feel a lot of people do not really know like do we go to a hospital do we not go to a hospital do we are there at home like you know kind of like tests that you can do is there some place that you can go to because if, if i feel like i'm infected i would be really scared to like meet anyone or go anywhere like how do i get myself then like tested without harming other people so i recommend um self-isolation first of all if you think that you might have something or you have traveled because that's what i did after i came the two days that i was home i did not meet my parents i was in another room i was eating there i was sleeping there by myself and doing everything by myself and that's how my parents did not get the virus they were tested wow. negative that's so social distancing is extremely important as the government is asking us to do. 
Amazing. So wait, so did you go to the hospital? Yes, I went myself. So how did you get there? The symptoms. Hello? I had symptoms. My mom obviously drew me there. Hello. Sorry, Vida, my connection is so bad. <laughs> yeah, everyone's connection these days is terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's so, terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. So I had uh, some symptoms and okay, so I decided to go myself. What? what was the treatment like when you were there? Uh, treatment was mostly medicines. So uh, the hospital had all the facilities a hospital should have. So there was an isolation mm -hmm. ward with a bed, and my own bathroom. Yeah. There was AC in the room. There was a heater for hot water. There was also a small space for, you know, like a balcony where I could go and walk. So it was everything that a hospital wow. should have. Yeah. Okay. And, okay, this is probably... What was it like to actually go through the virus? Like, was it actually painful? Is it something like, is it, was there a lot of pain and hurt? And like, I mean, was it difficult? I mean, like, I think, I mean, I've seen, I've seen some videos of people who have mm. been short of breath and they can't breathe and they just look like they're going through hell. Was that something that you went through recovering from this? No, while that happened. That happens when your infection spreads. So mine was detected while it was in the throat. It did not have any time to go to my lungs or, you know, uh, give me shortness of breath or anything. There was okay. obviously some uh, oxygen level changes in my body because of, you know, the virus. Yeah. So that caused a lot of fatigue. So while I was at the hospital, I was basically either resting or, you know, sleeping or sitting and reading. Only the last few days when, you know, one of my tests came negative. After that, I could do some um, yoga and, you know, I'm, I'm very pro yoga. So a little Yay, bit of yoga. And... <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so how long did that take then? So how long were you in the hospital for? 14 days. On the 14th day, the second test that they did uh, turned out negative. So I mm -hmm. could go home. Oh my god, and what was your first thought when you like were when your test came out negative? I was so happy, like I survived a pandemic, so there was no bound for my happiness. I know. <laughs> and I was extremely I grateful, yeah, to everyone there. You feel like you have like this new lease of life and like, oh, life yes. is something that you just have to be appreciative of and just pay much more attention to and be more loving and kinder to people and you know, I mean, and how like there's so many silly small things that we fight about and fret about and, you know, complain about. But actually, it's meaningless when you're sitting in a hospital, you know, you know, surviving something like COVID-19. Um, so it's everything just turns out to be so frivolous, right? So, yeah. Well, so now, now I survive. think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now I think I have a new meaning to life. I appreciate it much more than I used to do. I value things that I've been taking for granted for That's so long. Amazing. And I'm genuinely very happy now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, Rita, keep that up because that is, I mean, seriously, you have been extremely blessed. Unfortunately, there have been many deaths like around the world from COVID-19 and you have survived it. So yours, your story is a miracle story. And, you know, always, always be reminded of what you, you know, what you've accomplished and what you've survived and, you know, um, keep that spirit up. Um, but I think what was interesting was how you said that you used like a lot of yoga and you used a lot of like mm -hmm. dance and you know like you felt like these things really helped you um kind of return back to to normalcy and back to life and get your immune system going and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. so uh is there anything else like you want to add to that or do you want to elaborate on yes it is very important to you know accept first of all because patients uh who have turned to depression or who have anxiety after they realize that they are uh, have they have COVID nineteen or you know anything like that. Even quarantine is making people so depressed. 
so the yeah. first thing is that they should accept like there is no choice other than what you are doing other than being in isolation or being quarantined so yeah. if they accept it if they accept that what they are doing has to be done like even the house chores because no one has staff at home then they'll be a lot more happier than they actually are and that's what i yeah. did too i accepted that i have this and i have to be treated so first of all i trusted the team and i had full faith in them that whatever they will do they'll do their best oh it's so good i think your positive yes. outlook helped you a lot and i truly believe in that like like you said like it's super depressing if like you find out that like, you've got like this crazy deadly virus and you know it, and and a lot of people i like i've been hearing this is like really been breaking my heart they've been running away from quarantine because they're so scared like quarantine is just going to like i mean make matters worse when actually it's going to be so much more safe for them and for everyone around um so i can understand the fear you know it's like it's a fear pandemic as well that a lot of people are going through yeah um, and i actually feel the fact that you were extremely strong not just physically doing physical things like yoga and your dance stuff but mentally so that's that's way way more effective i think than physically mentally you were i mean like you know you're battling it in your mind um so, so 50% I, of your problem is yeah. in your mind so if you battle that problem then physical the doctors are doing their best yes yeah exactly mm. really well said so is there anything else now like that you have to do or maintain like okay so i heard something you'll be able to like tell me if this is right or not so i heard when you come out of covid 19 um uh your your lungs are so impacted that it takes time for it to get back to normal or or something yeah. i mean like oh is that right yeah because i still experience a lot of fatigue my blood pressure keeps very low still so i have to keep myself hydrated at all times eat proper food take proper rest and uh, the only thing with this is it takes really long to heal and uh, you know even after you uh, have a negative test and you come home even after that it takes long for you to revive completely to the person you were before covid wow and you know how long that would take uh doctors have said about a month okay yeah and i've already gone two weeks and i'm much better than uh what i came out of the hospital as wow and what are you doing for your city right now like what are you eating what is your day like what is your exercise routine like i don't have an exercise routine right now because i have been advised to take rest <laughs> not even yoga um, No not even yoga like meditation is fine but no yoga okay. because you know blood pressure fluctuations and all that i might just right. fall from there yeah okay so after one month i can do that but otherwise i just help out mom a little bit at home and then i'm cooking a little bit baking a lot right. because i'm a pastry oh. chef as well so yeah, you're a pastry fun. chef as well yeah yeah oh my god amazing <laughs> i find that so therapeutic so i have been trying to make muffins I've made mm. two really bad batches. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I'll get some tips from you then Rita. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you need to help me. I've been trying to make banana muffins. Both my attempts have failed miserably. No one has dared to eat them. A few people dared, but then, you know, like the second batch, no one dared again to eat them. So <laughs> So I definitely need some advice with that. Sure. Um, I want to ask you when people uh when when you came back home after like your covid-19 experience were people like did you feel people were like a bit hesitant to be around or did you feel like people still had misconceptions or did you like how did you feel how were you welcome back was it good was it like oh no people were still scared like what was that like people have a lot of misconceptions so they are yeah. definitely not extremely welcoming Yeah. Uh we still have to rely on home deliveries. My immunity is still very low. So okay. there is a board outside my house that says COVID-19 house quarantine area do not enter. Yeah. So we are not allowed to go out of the house. Nobody is allowed to come in. What so what we, what where are you? You're not in Mumbai, right? You are No, are you? I'm in Gujarat, Surat. You're in Gujarat. Okay. Yeah. So oh the SMC is uh, helping us out but like some other vendors they just don't come near because there was this thing with my case I was the first case in Gujarat and yeah. before my test results um came out positive 
people had made my pictures my name my address everything viral and uh, declared that i was positive without the hospital even declaring or you know my test actually coming out positive so people basically everyone in the city knows me so yeah. they just don't come near yeah 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 we are still in quarantine so we have to rely on everyone outside and it's slightly difficult but the municipal corporation has been very cooperative and they've been helping us a lot that's great i love the fact that you know officials have actually been there for people who are suffering and you know who have contracted this and i think that that's what a lot of people are scared of like they're scared that you know it's me it's the end of the world if you get it and that's it and then you know what's going to happen but i don't think they realize that they're actually specialists out there they're actually people who care they're actually people who are risking their lives actually being in hospitals treating you doing their best you know to you know uh, with quarantine with this with that like so I think people need to get it out of their heads that they feel like they're experiencing symptoms and stuff. They need to let people know just so that it doesn't spread anymore, you know, and not run away yeah. from it. Not be afraid that you know they won't get taken, you know, taken care of and stuff like that. So, um, but okay, I am gonna just ask a few more questions. I think you know you you should go back and, and relax because you. really kind of have been through a lot so I'm not going to take up much more of your time Mira but last but not least I'm sorry but like I'm on this chat every single day with my friends I have a family chat and a friends chat and like all we discuss all day and I don't know if you do the same thing is when will this get over what's going to happen <laughs> like every, all of us have these like oh the little conspiracy theories like oh my god you know this is what happened and no 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 they're saying not till next year things won't go back to normal till october quarantine's going to go on forever like so i mean i'm pretty sure that you have like these discussions at home and stuff as well and uh, yes we do what do you think like do you think that how long do you think our lockdown and quarantine is going to go on so like do you think this is something that's going to be a lot longer you've been through it so Do you think we have still a long way to go before we see the end of COVID-19? I think there is a long way looking at the number of cases that have been increasing every day. Yeah. And I think yeah. that quarantine is the only way out because this is extremely contagious and the only way to stop it is prevent uh, meeting new people or infected surfaces or infected things. So yeah. I think our government has taken really good steps. and people should cooperate there are a lot of people who are not cooperating with the officials Agreed. like uh, in indore there was uh, pelting stones at the doctors and then there are some other places where uh, you know the doctors who are living in the society in a, a in the residential society the people are not cooperating with them asking yeah. them to go out those things are very unreasonable because you know they are the frontline people who are working and you know and, and it's mm -hmm. like vera it's crazy but there is like You know there's very educated people also who are very aware of what's going on who you know know very well what the rules the regulations like everything is and they're still not paying attention or adhering to what's going on and it's like I find that so baffling that you know they would rather put other people's lives in risk and their selves like their own lives in risk as well um but I think you said it's so right though it's so simply it's it's so simple like stay at home don't meet new people practice your social distancing make make a phone call you know like it's it's like yeah. i mean like everyone's like oh my god we can't go up but yeah just like facetime make a phone call call people do things at home there's like there's a lot that you actually can do if you put your mind to it we don't necessarily have to be outside doing all of this so you can work from home there's like no excuse about that like oh yeah but um Okay, well, it was lovely chatting with you, and um, thank you. <laughs> if there is uh, anything else you want to add, um, or like, if there's anything else you want to like telling people, um, you know, feel free to do that. Um, um, but yeah, like, I, let me let me see if there's like a question or something that comes up. So I just want to tell the people that you know whatever our government is doing have confidence in that and in case if the quarantine is ex extended that's just because of the stupidity of some people and please cooperate with your government because I have said this a million times and I'm saying this again that you are not stuck inside you safe inside so stay indoors and stay safe 
Rita, oh my God, that was like the best thing ever, like that you had just mentioned. I'm so true and so happy for what's going on right now. So thank you so much for that. Um, I hope whoever was watching and, you know, following this live, um, whatever they need to hear, they heard. And uh, Rita, thank you so much for your time. And um, yeah, thanks for being such an inspiration for everyone. Thank you. <laughs> nice to see All you right, too. Great. Take care, Bye. Rita. Take care. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.